25 minutes before 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this uh, Thursday morning. Hope you're doing well. You know, every year uh, I get a copy of the old Farmer's Almanac sent to us here at the radio station. And every year I give it to either Carol Ann Baldwin, who does You've Got a Garden on Tuesdays. And before Carol Ann, I would give it to Suzanne Shepard. So every year I would yep, get this wonderful, ago. wonderful magazine. Mm -hmm. And I would look through it and get some really cool information and then give it away. <laughs> and it's just such a great little magazine, and uh, and it's always uncannily accurate. And I don't I, I don't know how they do it. I don't know how you can predict weather a year in advance, but but they seem to be able to pull it off. And in addition to that, all these cool little articles and fun little things to read. It's it's the kind of magazine. I I'm, I guess it only comes out once a year. Um, I think I'm right about that. And. And yet it's one of those, it's kind of like you wish it came out more than once a year. Uh, it's just, it's a, a tradition in America. It's the sa same cover every year, except for some, you know, some added little, little things like the date. Yeah, I'm sure the price has changed over the year. <laughs> uh, Sarah Peralta is on the phone. She's the assistant editor of the Old Farmer's Almanac, and she's on the phone with us. So let's chat with her about this. This is just a fun, useful, entertaining, uh, every, ca every category, especially if you're a gardener. Uh, good morning, Sarah. Good morning. How are you? I'm pretty good. Where are you? Where are you calling from? I'm in Dublin, New Hampshire. Let me tell you what the weather's going to be there. Let me find Dublin in here. Yeah, let me know. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. I'm teasing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it says here that the summer, the upcoming summer, well, let me do the winter first. The winter right here in Central Florida, cool and wet. Cool and wet. Cool so, and wet. Uh, all the people from my area that usually flock to your area because it's so cold, um, not going to be that happy. <laughs> it's still going to be warmer than you guys, though, right? That's true, but wet. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we have roofs. Yes, we, we have... do. And we have umbrellas, too. <laughs> and raincoats. This is a fun fun uh, magazine. How long does it... Is, am I right? This only comes out once a year, right? Actually, it does only come out once a year, but we've just created in the last year um, something you can get online called the Old Farmer's Almanac Monthly Magazine. So you can get that monthly. And and it's a, it's an online thing only. It is an online thing only, um, and it's it's much smaller than the regular almanac. You get about four or five different articles covering what you would expect: um, gardening, seasonal recipes, um, stuff like that. Oh, okay. But uh, it's available monthly. Okay. Now, how does this stuff get put together? How do you? Let's talk about the prediction part of this first. The weather prediction. How do you guys do that? How do you do something so far in advance? Well, we are using three scientific disciplines, the same that our founder was using in 1792, but obviously as technology is available to us, we take advantage of it. Yeah. But um, those sciences are climatology, meteorology, and um, solar science. And and would, like, um, would the global warming uh, part of what we hear about all the time be proven or disproven by the, by the old farmer's almanac? <laughs> <laughs> Well, we always say that it's true that there's climate change. You know, it's kind of a, a global warming is kind of a political thing, and we yeah. obviously don't take any sides. So right. we do acknowledge that climate change is happening, but um, it's been happening always. You know, it's, it's nothing really new. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people would agree with that. Um, so what, is, is it fun working for the magazine? What, I mean, as far as what you do? I learn something new every single day. It's a lot of fun to come into work. I just I just opened at random to a page, and uh, it's the gesta gestation period of, of some animals. <laughs> yeah, that's very helpful if you have a farm. You, that's very yeah. good. But see, the other day I saw this video of, of these two zebras, and they were going to be you know parents soon. Yeah, uh, <laughs> they were having fun. <laughs> so I was just curious. I wonder how long before the little baby zebra comes out. Well, if they check the gestation and mating table, they'd be all set. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when you do the Farmer's Almanac every year, uh, what kind of experts do you have on staff that's able to write everything with their predictions? Uh, as far as the weather goes, we do work with a meteorologist. Um, it's not us, the editors, sitting around picking and choosing what we'd like the weather to be. Uh, we do actually have a scientist that works with us. Um, in the other articles, we have a lot of um, master gardeners that contribute gardening articles. Uh, we work with a lot of award-winning chefs for our recipes, so we are working with some experts, and then some just regular journalists, or some of us write the articles. You have a lot of ads in here for like psychics and spiritual healers and things like that. Have you ever contacted any of them? 
I have not. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask for some advice. I thought maybe they'd make an interesting guest. Well, you could let me know. You call them and, and then you tell me how, they, how that worked out for you. Uh, you know, I don't want to discount it. Yesterday we had on the show the author um, and screenwriter Delia Efron. Have, do you know her? Are you familiar yes. with her? Yes. Yes. And, and she told us, and she was like, I couldn't believe it, but this is what happened. She had a dog psychic visit her, and the dog psychic said that the dog was worried about her thigh. The, not the dog's thigh, but uh, Delia's thigh. And it was interesting because the woman was wearing long pants and, and the psychic couldn't see that there was a bandage on her thigh. She just had surgery on her thigh. Isn't, oh, that, wow. is, isn't that crazy? That's amazing. So who knows? I mean, I'm not going to be one to say things don't happen. And now McDonald's has these uh, Ouija boards on, on their Happy Meals. Did you see that? No, I didn't. <laughs> oh, no, that's what, scary. What do they do? Predict how much weight you're going to gain after you eat them? <laughs> <laughs> they won't last that's long. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> uh, when a person wants to be a contributor from a gardening perspective, uh, what do you look for in that person? Uh, we really just want to make sure you know your stuff. Um, obviously, some people are just backyard gardeners and some are more educated, uh, maybe some sort of um, schooling, but not necessarily. Um, just someone who really loves to garden, knows what they're talking about, and is willing to work with us. Do you draw on events from the, the prior year's almanac, or is everything totally fresh? Everything is totally fresh. We do give you an update as far as how we did with our predictions the year before. We don't shy away from that. We say if we're right or if we're wrong. Mm -hmm. But everything else is brand new. Uh, in, in the back, there's a, a page, I guess the very last page, Vinegar. Vinegar can be used for what? And it lists all the things you can use vinegar for. That's right. That's one of our advertisements that comes in every year. Oh, that's uh, an ad? As I say, yeah, I think it's a book that you order. But again, oh. never ordered the book, just like I've never called the spiritualist. <laughs> <laughs> and one page before that. Okay, so the last thing in the book that's not an ad is this rest in peace headstone. That's right. It an old tombstone in Maryland that said, here lies an atheist, all dressed up and no place to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness i love that so you when have you have to be fun so when you're putting it together um gosh if i were you i'd be wanting to do this so well so you must be happy about the monthly issue right well it is a lot of work so i mean we're working on the regular the old farmer's almanac for months out of the year and then while we're doing that the monthly obviously comes out every month so we're working on that every month plus we have wall calendars and cookbooks and we have a garden guide so we have lots of products that we're working on you sound like a lot of fun you're, you're you have got a fun tone to your voice what what are these when, when i look at this i'm looking at um july and and this the, the particular issue that you sent me is the southern edition is are there four editions there are there's the national edition which um has your dates for like boston but you can which is you know our area then there's a Southern Edition, a Western Edition, and a Canadian Edition. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, well, in the Southern Edition, let me see. I wanted to ask you something. July, uh, let's see, July, I'm going to go to the 5th. You've got these Gothic letters. You've got a funny-looking S. You've got a D. you got a... Like a funny-looking what? <laughs> S. Oh, S. S. Oh, okay. <laughs> you got a, you got a moon, uh, uh, a crescent moon. A moon. How do you read this? How do you, how do you read what all those things mean? Well, thank you for asking. There's several pages in front of the calendar section that tells you exactly how to read these things because they are confusing. Oh, where? So, so that is the sixth Sunday after Pentecost. That's what all those letters and abbreviations mean. And the moon is at perigee. That's what that means. What is what does perigee mean? Um, it's either the furthest or the closest from. <laughs> okay, okay. And the, which one it is. and the weather is looming. And the weather is looming. Do you, do you happen to have the one that would tell us today? Oh, that would be my 2014 almanac. I don't have that right in front of me because I, you know, I'm in gear for 2015. But, but see, now we've done this in, in another in years past because you guys have been sending this to us every year, mm -hmm. and I've actually opened it to the day. Like if we had weird weather, mm -hmm. I would open it to the day, and it would be very accurate. It would either be one or two days off or right on the money. Well, let's say what's your weather? <laughs> <laughs> what? What's, What's your, your weather? weather right now? I'll right now, it's, what we said. it's okay. Oh yeah, that's what I want to know. Okay, let me let me find it. Uh, t right now here, it's eighty one degrees and beautiful. It's a little bit cooler than normal. I guess you could say that. Um, and I don't think there's any rain in the forecast today. 
What? So for, for this time period, uh, in Florida, sunny, hot in the north, scattered thunderstorms storms in the south. Okay, and that's true, but isn't that always true? Uh, well, for Florida, yeah, it's always sunny, it's always hot. <laughs> <laughs> you always have thunderstorms. But I get, what I'm trying uh, to tell you, oh, um, what I'm trying to tell you, oh my gosh, we, we're up against the clock. Can we just take a little break, uh, Sarah? Sure. Uh, this is a fun interview. And, and listeners, at the mm-hmm. end of the interview, the one I have is going out to one of you. So yes. I'll, I'll give it away. <laughs> we'll take a little break. And we've got a weather forecast, by the way, speaking of weather. And we'll be right back. We'll be right back with, am I saying your name right, Sarah Peralt? Yes, you are. Okay. We'll be right back with Sarah. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. It'll be partly sunny today with a thunderstorm in spots, mainly during the afternoon hours over the interior sections. The high 88 at the beach is 94 inland, and partly cloudy tonight with a shower or thunderstorm in spots, low 71 inland, 77 on the beaches. Tomorrow, a mix of sun and clouds with a couple of showers and a thunderstorm, the high 90 to 95, and for Saturday, partly sunny with an afternoon thunderstorm, high 90 to 94. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. That's the sound of your skin cooking. Because it's August, it's Florida, and it's hot. That's the sound of cool, refreshing water as you splash into your new radiant pool from ASP, America's swimming pool company. And right now is the perfect time to put a radiant pool in your yard. Not only will you be cooling off in style while adding value to your home, but now through Labor Day, with any radiant pool purchase, you'll receive an all-inclusive Cancun getaway vacation for four. So you can enjoy your new pool all year round and get an incredible getaway vacation anytime you want it. And radiant pools can be installed underground, above ground, and anywhere in between. And did you know that you could find Finance your new pool with an interest rate as low as 4.99%. But you have to act now. This deal ends on Labor Day. So call ASP, America's Swimming Pool Company, 352-861-7229. That's 352-861-7229. Or stop by their new showroom, 9169 South Highway 441 in Ocala. Pick up your copy of Lady Lake Magazine featuring local businesses and issues and written by local volunteers. Lady Lake Magazine has become a must-read in Marion, Lake, and Sumter Counties, audited by Circulation Verification Council and serving the area for 23 years. Plus, Tom's Picks, a free referral for people who are looking for a company to do work for them. All we ask is that you tell them where you heard about them. Call Tom's Picks at 352-804-1223 and pick up your copy of Lady Lake Magazine today. Now read Ocala Downtown Newspaper Online. Hi, I'm Yvette, and I'm here to tell you a few things about ABC Frederick's Appliance. They sell not only new, but used guaranteed appliances. When you call ABC Frederick's Appliance, they will provide service on what they sell and any appliances that you own. ABC Frederick's Appliance is located in Bellevue, right over the railroad tracks. Call 352-629-5181. That's 352-629-5181. That's 352-629-5181. ABC Frederick's Appliance. All right, 12 minutes before 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this Thursday. Sarah Peralt is on the phone from the Old Farmer's Almanac. She's the assistant editor there. And uh, did she say she's in New Hampshire? New Hampshire? Sarah, are you in New ha- where are you again? I'm in Dublin, New Hampshire. Yeah. Dublin, New Hampshire. But that sounds pretty. Is it a pretty area? It's gorgeous, especially coming up in the next few weeks and the leaves are going to turn. It's beautiful. Oh, wow. I just, oh, wow. See, that's the one thing we miss out on here. We don't get the foliage thing. Yeah, I couldn't imagine not seeing it every year. I love it. It's my favorite time of year. You could travel. Yes, <laughs> t- yeah, but not during peak foliage season, which they put. <laughs> no. The, uh, the, I just went to your Facebook page, by the way, and I liked you. Oh, good. Thank but, you. See, I love this about today's world. You could just yeah. say, I like you, <laughs> and I don't even know you, but I just liked you. On, on oh, I like you, too. <laughs> the Old Farmer's Almanac was founded by Robert, R- Robert B. Thomas. I would have thought... Benjamin Franklin. What did Benjamin Franklin have to do with this? Well, Benjamin Franklin's on our cover because we think of him as the f- the father of almanacs because he had the uh, Ben. No, what was it the called? Poor Richards? The Poor Richards. Al- I was going to say the Ben Franklin almanac. <laughs> the Poor Richards almanac. So uh, that was one of the earliest ones. So that's our you know tip of the hat to oh, okay. Benjamin Franklin. And why did uh, Robert Thomas call it the Old Farmer's Almanac? Why did he? Why didn't he just say the Farmer's Almanac? And it was, it was old. Was the word "old" uh, modifying the farmer or modifying the almanac? <laughs> it modifies the almanac. When it started, it was <laughs> actually just the farmer's almanac. But then uh, the word "old" was added around 1832 because other almanacs started popping up, and we needed to differentiate ourselves from other. Companies. Oh wow! 
Oh, when when you have uh, submissions in the Old Farmers Almanac, is there any kind of a uh, uh, controversy? Sometimes when something is uh, submitted, do people say, "Well, I don't know if I really can believe that," and then they do some more research? Sometimes um, we do have to look into everything before we publish it because you know we go out to three million different people, and I believe our readers trust us. So we like to present factual information. Some of it, you know, tongue in cheek and you know. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Yeah. But, you know, we like to put out the facts. Uh, when you do your uh, different recipes, are you leaning toward meatless recipes now, or do you have a well-rounded selection? We really do have a well-rounded selection. And I thank you for bringing up recipes because I forgot to mention that next month in September, we are releasing our Old Farmer's Almanac Comfort Food Cookbook. Oh. Um, it's over 200 recipes of everything you think of when you think comfort food. Oh, man. Um, you need- meatloaf, apple pie, cheesecake, <sighs> all those things that make you feel good and make you happy and make you think about time with family. Chock full of those kinds of recipes. That's all I need. I don't need any other food but those things. I, yeah. I have a recipe for what, what do I make? I make tuna noodle, noodle salad. salad. I can tell really you my good. recipe. Are you ready for this? <laughs> one pound of shells. What do you call it? Shell pasta? Yes. That's it. Just one cooked. box. of cooked. Yeah, cooked, of course. <laughs> uh, <laughs> one whole jar of mayonnaise. Yeah, the <laughs> Oh, my jar. goodness. You no, know, this is great. Are Helms. you kidding? <laughs> and, and, th- and then three large cans of the albacore tuna. Let me tell you, that is the perfect recipe for that for that it stuff. It is. It's wonderful. Get out salt and pepper or some kind of spice in there, or ah, you do that later. Well, salt and pepper. Do that later. Yeah. <laughs> do, do you know we had we we did a cookbook here at WOCA uh, years ago, and, and uh, maybe we should send you a copy, and you could maybe one day put some of the recipes from our listeners in there. We had squirrel, a squirrel yes. recipe in there. Okay, I've never had a squirrel. <laughs> in, in in the old farmer's almanac, there's a a couple of pictures of um, gigantic tomatoes. Is that real? Um, yeah, those are uh, another advertisement for some seeds being sold by Burpee, which is a company we work with very often. I think they're pretty well known across the country. Yeah, but that's, I mean, the man is holding it. It's, got, it's not a fake one, is it? This looks like a pumpkin. No, you, I'm, you really have to have the right growing conditions and the right soil. And I mean, uh, to get a tomato that big, everything has to be perfect. All right, mm-hmm. all right. Do, do you uh, do anything with the hurricane predictions in the Old Farmer's Almanac? We do occasionally um, give some heads up towards uh, what kind of hurricane season we're going to have for next year. Not that helpful for this year. For next year, we are saying that it's going to be, um, you know, like it has been, not too active. But there should be one major hurricane strike, um, you know, in Louisiana, into Texas, that area, where they definitely don't need one. Oh, wow. Do you know... um you have the 2015 trends article in in this edition, and one of the things people are talking about is hamburgers made from laboratory grown meat. Oh, <laughs> that sounds delicious! That sounds as delicious to me as your tuna shell mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you! Oh, my recipe didn't sound good to you. I don't like tuna. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Well, do, what do you like? T- um, s- salmon. No, I don't really like fish that much. So you want like a hamburger? Chicken. Castle? I want chicken. Chicken. Not a hamburger. Not a hamburger grown in the laboratory. All right. All right. No, so no, chicken. See, so. chicken would be a great substitute instead of tuna. Yeah. You should try that one. And you can get cans of chicken just like cans of tuna. I know. Well, where are you in New I can come. I can deliver it. I- <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> It'll be on your doors. Why, why, get- why don't you come up when we've got like 12 feet of snow? <laughs> I would love that. I'm, you probably hate it, but I, I, I haven't seen snow since I was a kid. I would love to. No, I take that back. I saw it in North Carolina one time. I'm sorry. I did see it. Yeah. All right. We, we've uh, got a phone call. You want, you want to take some listeners' calls? Sure. All right. Great. Uh, again, just so you, in case you're just tuning in, Sarah Peralta is our guest. Just having a great time with her. She's the assistant editor for the Old Farmer's Almanac. Good morning. Thank you for calling. You're on the air with Sarah. Yes. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning. Hey, uh, is there any way you can get your magazine to the Hurricane Pre- Prediction Center? Uh, they seem to be pretty well off base every year. They need to have some good educational tools to work with. Do uh, you think you can get your magazine to them? <laughs> I will send one in the copy. This, uh, send one in the mail this afternoon. <laughs> Very good, because we need it every year. They're predicting their their predictions are so far off, and uh, I, I wish somehow they could straighten that whole thing out a little bit. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> hey, another, another quick question. Do you ever get any harassment phone calls for people that, let's say, you had a prediction about this and maybe a farmer planned it that because of your prediction and it didn't turn out? Do you ever get any nasty mail or phone calls? Yes, we do get some angry callers and some angry mail, um, and we just do our best to 
just talk them down and maybe help them out as much we can. Okay, thank you. You're uh, welcome. So, since you have different editions for different parts of the country, when some people move to Florida, they like bringing their plants that they had up in their area, say like from uh, you know the uh, uh, western area of the world, and then they'll come down here and try to plant and everything. Should they get that western edition almanac in reference to their plants to see if it would be growing and doing whatever it is they need to do or would that plant adapt to this area um well what the different editions are really for the four different editions canadian um southern western and national it's really just for your sky highlights for your sunrise sunset um tides if you're in an area of the country that has tides uh -huh. so it's not really based on you know what kind of plants you can grow here and what kind of plants you can grow there is oh. based on basically what's going on in the sky. Oh, okay. So I, I, in, 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 the, uh, in this edition, there is another article called The 24 Strange Things About the Universe. And number six, <laughs> number six is uh, Earth, there's an Earth inside of Earth. Um, there is a, a, a solid ball the size of Pluto inside of Earth, and it spins faster than the rest of our world. So I have a question about that. Oh, oh great. Let me, get the Let me get the astronomer. Let me get the astronomer No, no, no. I have a question. You know how Einstein's theory, is suppo this, is, this is supposed to be, the faster you go, the slower time goes. Have You heard that, right? I've heard that. Okay. I don't know. I don't understand it either, but that's what I've always heard. Now, the outside of an album, like a, like a vinyl record, Mm -hmm. spins faster than the inside. Really? And, and that's just 12 inches, right? Ah. Yeah. Right. So, so you can imagine that the outside of the Earth must spin a lot faster than the inside of the Earth, mm -hmm. right? That seems to be what makes sense. Which means that the outside has to be a lot younger than the The inside must be a lot older because, according to Einstein, the faster you move, the slower time moves which doesn't really make that much sense to me, but I've heard that. I know it doesn't make sense to you, but here's the useful part of this. Okay. If you live on top of a mountain, as you do in New Hampshire, <laughs> you're actually younger than you would have been if you lived in the valley. <laughs> oh, my God, I'm like, I'm like 16. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. You are so charming, Sarah. You're it, such fun. Is your whole staff as fun as you are? No. No! <laughs> Of course not. How could we all be like this? <laughs> Do you have a, a favorite part of the almanac? Oh, my very favorite part is the recipes because I love to cook and I love to bake. So, but, but you don't every, like tuna. But not tuna. <laughs> every year we have a reader recipe contest where we ask you to send in your best recipe for uh, maybe an ingredient or or um, course, you know, like chicken or something. Uh -huh. And we re we award cash prizes for first, second, and third place. So last year we asked you to send us your best carrot recipes. So we've got those in the 2015. And for next year, we want you to send us your best dips and spreads. So I love it when we get to taste them and test them. That's like my favorite part of the year. All oh, right. that is so, so yummy. So I, I, I'm just gonna, I, I'm just gonna say, I think you would like albacore. <laughs> I don't. He's gonna convert you. I don't think. I mean, it's really not that different than chicken. It just it just swam instead of pecked at the ground. Yeah, I tried it. I because tr I want to like it. I oh, do because okay. it's a very convenient food. That's the way but. I was with olives. I wanted to like it. Uh, gosh, you're fun. I have a copy of the Old Farmer's Almanac. I know you're gonna want this one. So if you don't win it from me, then you can go buy it. It's six dollars and ninety nine cents. It's up from the price it originally was, which was four cents. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a little bit of uh, inflation since 1792. <laughs> but but if you want the copy, wow. I have call me right now six two two W O C A and I'll leave it for you. Uh, Sarah, thank you for being on the air. That was such a fun interview. Oh, thanks. That was a great time. <laughs> it was a breath of fresh air. We have so many things to talk about that aren't yeah. so lovely, but this was lovely. Thank great. you, thank you, Sarah. Thank you. All right, we'll be right back. This is the source W O C A. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. 
Fox News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. A top Ukrainian official says two columns of tanks from Russia have entered a strategic town after firing missiles at a border post. Ukraine's prime minister saying it's not just rebels, but Russian troops as well. Russian military boots are on Ukrainian ground. Russia denies being involved. Separatists appear to have taken control of a town in southeastern Ukraine. Fox Radio Simon Owen. There's word that another American has died in Syria fighting with militants. A source in Minneapolis tells Fox News that a second family was sent a photo from Syria of a dead body, reportedly their son, Abdurrahman Mohammed, though Fox's efforts to independently reach the family were not successful and the State Department did not immediately respond. Fox's Catherine Herridge. And a spokesperson for Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt say the couple tied the knot in France on Saturday. Fox News. We report. You decide. They say every healthy relationship should have a balance of predictability and spontaneity. In fact, it is that assurance of security that makes the spontaneous possible. Your relationship with your car should be a little like that, too. With our new industry-leading unlimited mileage warranty, your certified pre-owned Mercedes-Benz instills a sense of confidence. You drive away knowing that you can keep driving for up to three years and never have to worry about the miles. Add to that our new complimentary prepaid maintenance on select models, and your certified pre-owned Mercedes-Benz becomes the ultimate carefree escape vehicle. Only during the Mercedes-Benz Certified Pre-Owned Sales event, going on now through September 2nd, can you also take advantage of a two-month payment credit on many models, plus three months of Sirius XM satellite radio. So hurry in today. It might just be the most predictable spur-of-the-moment decision you've ever made. See your authorized Mercedes-Benz dealer for complete details and limitations on certified pre-owned warrant. It's time for Farm Range Headlines on the Southeast Agnet. I'm Tyron Spearman reporting.